Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Career Insights where we speak with industry experts on how to better manage our finances. Uh today we have Ashwin again uh on our show. Um Ashwin heads products and alternates at Access AMC. He has over 16 years of experience out of which 11 have been in banking and capital markets. Um Ash Ashwin joined Access in 2010 as a portfolio manager, PMS and now heads product and alternatives. He has a MBA from IIM Calcutta and a bachelor's in engineering from the metallurgy in metallurgy from National Institute of Technology. Welcome back, Ashwin. How have you been? All good, all good. I hope all good with you as well. Same here. Yeah. Thanks for asking. So let's let's dig, uh, you know, right into what uh, we we want to discuss today, and that is dynamic asset allocation. So let's start with real basics. You know, what is asset allocation? What does it mean? Why is it important? yeah um and i think uh, the crux is in just understanding that uh, there are different uh, what we call asset classes which means that these are different type of investment opportunities think of them as uh, you know different buckets that your money can go into uh, one bucket could be something like equity which is more of a growth asset does well when economy is booming um uh, when uh, there are hiccups can have more volatility another bucket could be a debt uh, bucket which is does more as a stable a regular income kind of a bucket so different buckets uh, why do you need to have asset allocation is more because uh, different buckets work differently so when you uh, you heard of the old saying don't put all your eggs in one basket uh, so if we have uh, different baskets it helps uh, balance out uh, the risk in some sense uh, and make it more stable for the investors over a long period great great so um, you know everyone talks about diversification and asset allocation is how you diversify and the advantage of the diversification is that it makes your journey your investing journey a bit more smoother it takes off the peaks and troughs and hopefully you stay invested for a longer time so um what are the different kinds of asset allocation right so there is static asset allocation there is dynamic asset allocation there is tactical asset allocation can you tell us more about what each of them entails yeah so uh the minute we talk about having different buckets then the question arises how do you decide how much money goes into each bucket and uh, asset allocation is nothing but taking that top level call saying that uh, at a very simple level that so much percentage of my money should be in equity for example and the remaining in say debt for example just take a very simple two bucket example um when you keep that steady uh that's the easiest sort of uh, top down uh, way to manage for a lot of people they don't want to get too complicated they want to keep life very simple they can just say that let me just have say a 50 50 allocation 50% of my money is in equity 50 is in debt and every time it goes you know away from that i just make sure that it comes back to that level so that's a classical static asset allocation approach where you have a very simple uh, target number in mind and you try and get back to that every chance that you get um there are other ways of doing it however uh, because uh, uh, just to take the counter of that is you could say that instead of being at a fixed number why don't i increase my equity when it is more attractive and decrease my equity level when it is less attractive so that becomes a little bit more of a dynamic approach now uh, so these are the two broadly different ways of doing it one is to keep it very simple and Uh, uh what is called static and the other one is to make it more dynamic but that will also require better handle on what the current environment is like at any given time how do you do that right so of course the next question is how do you do dynamic asset allocation what are the factors that you look at um what are the factors that an investor should look at is it something that investors can do on their own is it something where they can gain from a portfolio managers expertise um how do amcs think about dynamic asset allocation and what what are the benefits and uh, of of doing it like that so i think this is where it gets a little tricky because uh, a lot of us uh, uh, will confuse dynamic asset allocation with market timing and essentially uh, the 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 mistake that many of us make uh, 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 is that we get pulled into markets when they are booming uh, there is a fear of missing out that kicks in uh, and we at the sign of panic uh, like let's say what was happening last year we get too scared to kind of remain invested and we go out uh, so that's the classical sort of the greed and fear cycle which forces you to do the opposite of, 
of uh, what may be uh, a healthy thing to do. Uh, and that's where dynamic asset allocation uh, can uh, should not be confused with that. Dynamic is actually a, an approach where you, uh, in a very calculated manner, look at the uh, attractiveness of the market. And actually, the exact opposite of this example, where in an environment like last year, when things are looking very bleak, and the interesting thing is that the opportunity set could be more attractive, forward-looking, you actually increase the uh, allocation. And when things are uh, you know, looking very exuberant, uh, you so dial down the risk, uh, so to speak. Therefore, it should be done to be uh, to be able to do a good job of that. It has to be done in a systematic manner. It has to be done using a very uh, clearly defined approach, using clearly defined set of parameters, so that we don't apply the whims and fancies. Uh, because then, the minute you apply whims and fancies, uh, our emotional biases take over, uh, and that's the, always the th- uh, risk in something like this. So one way to think about this is that uh, an investor's behavior will be very pro-cyclical. Markets are rallying. You want to load up. Um, you want to buy, you know, the stock that's gone up 2x or 3x. Uh, when markets are crapping all over the place as they did last March, then you want to sell out, right? So you have the behavioral bias is um, to do that. And asset allocation is actually working against that behavior bias because historically there is enough empirical data that shows um, when markets are really, really bullish, those are usually not the best times to buy for long-term returns, right? So um, can, you, can you give us some examples of what kind of metrics would a dynamic asset allocation fund look at uh, to kind of make this call? Yeah, I think uh, there are, uh, uh, at, at a very basic level, there are two, three things that uh, any market environment you try to uh, establish. One is uh, the the... But the core of it is just the valuation matrix and uh, a number of, as you rightly said, number of data empirical studies have been done. And it's it's very intuitive, right? That you invest at higher valuation, your likely returns are lower. If you invest at a lower valuation, your likely returns will be higher. So, so clearly the one very, very important and a core part of these uh, uh, arrangements, these setups is to look at valuation. But it, uh, you also need a few other things to make a well-rounded picture. So you also look at uh, how the market uh, risk overall risk profile is. Is it very, very volatile period? Is it a less volatile period? Is it jumping all over the place? In other words, uh, you also look at what has been the recent trend uh, of the market. Is it looking uh, very positive? Is it looking negative? How are the flows playing out? So these are two three relatively straightforward parameters that can help you take a very well-rounded uh, 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 approach to deciding how the market is shaping up and to take uh, uh, your adjusting your exposures accordingly. This leads us to a very interesting um, um, uh, kind of, you know, situation. A lot of, um, you know, more <laughs> savvy investors already follow some kind of asset allocation themselves, right? For example, they might be 70% in equity, 30% in debt. They might have some system that they would have either uh, read somewhere or, you know, they believe in or they would have empirically tested it themselves. Um, how would a asset allocation fund then fit into their portfolio? And what are the advantages of doing that asset allocation through a fund structure rather than an investor doing it themselves? Yeah. So I think they, these funds work for almost all type of investors because there is a, a beautiful, uh, you know, cost efficient, tax efficient rebalancing mechanism that investors get access to. Uh, let me explain in uh, in simple words. If you invest into any uh, asset allocation product, let's say a balanced advantage or a dynamic asset allocation kind of product, uh, what you're getting is not just the uh, fund manager's view on what the exposure is and that adjustment, but you're also getting the seamless execution of the same. Uh, if we uh, as individual investors buy and sell equity, buy and sell debt, there are transaction costs, there is taxation, etc., when the same thing is done inside a fund, it is seamless. We don't have to sit. There doesn't require any bandwidth from us. But more importantly, the transaction cost taxation becomes far more efficient uh, because it is happening inside the portfolio of the fund itself. Uh, and which is why I think that these funds can make sense for a lot of investors. I like to think of it as my pizza analogy where these uh, funds can form the base of the pizza and uh, the toppings can be done by individual uh, products in equity and debt. And that allows the investors to achieve the right balance, whatever they are looking for uh, in their portfolio. 
So uh, one, one uh, you know, other question that comes is, what kind of innovation are we going to see in this space, right? I think um, we are seeing some of it. We are seeing, we are, you know, we are moving away from a two asset class um, asset allocation to a multi-asset class asset allocation. Um, what, what, what are you guys planning um, in this space? I mean, anything that you can disclose publicly, that is. Uh, sure. And what, where is the industry heading when it comes to asset allocation? Because what we see on our platform and what we also read is it's actually a very popular product. A lot of people like this fact that, hey, you know what, when the markets go up, they, you, you, you automatically rebalance to a lower equity weight. And when the markets go down, you rebalance to a higher equity weight. Um, what new are we going to see in this space? Yeah, I think... Uh... There is a this place uh, space is ripe for uh, innovation, ripe for uh, new development. I think at a very core level, the fact that uh, this space is seeing interest is a very very positive thing because in the past, uh, dedicated allocations to equity and debt always you get caught in that whole frenzy, and uh, the more people look at this as a viable space itself is a great first step. Uh, I think balanced advantage is a category is a fantastic innovation that we have seen in the last few years. Uh, it will continue to, I think, gain market share. More and more investors should experience that. According to us, this will become one of the core categories within the industry, uh, rightly so. And uh, going forward, I think uh, you will see, uh, I think, uh, two, three big trends. One is more sophisticated risk management techniques. So we are currently not using... Uh, things like derivatives, things like, you know, risk management, other sophisticated risk management approaches. Uh, I think you will start seeing some of those getting built, built in into these products. And the second is the expansion of the universe itself. So equity and debt are obviously the core asset classes that all investors should have, but there are many others as well. Uh, just to take three examples, global equities can be looked at, uh, commodities like gold, etc. can be looked at, uh, you know, other asset classes like uh, real estate through things like REITs. So these are just three examples, you know, global equities, commodities, REITs, uh, which can help really expand the uh, universe for investors. Uh, um, so if I had to summarize of two areas where I would like to see more work, uh, with, including, you know, from our own side, we are working on um, getting more sophisticated risk management tools going and uh, getting broader asset, uh, you know, classes going into these products. And finally, if I'm an investor, right, then what's my mental picture of a asset allocation fund? Should I think of it as equity or debt? I think the best way to think of it is, uh, uh, you know, of course, there are different asset allocation products. In case of static, life is very easy because you know the target allocation and it's easier to incorporate them in uh, your overall mix. Uh, the challenge comes in a dynamic one where the number can actually vary. And I think for dynamic, I think the way the best way to do see it is because these products can dial up all the way to 80 to 100, depend on different products. But most plants do go up to 80. In some some cases, they do go up to 100. Uh, so I think the best way to do it is to see them as a sort of a smarter equity exposure uh, to take because uh, it's not just uh, uh, that they will remain as a only a, a lower equity exposure all through. When the timing is right, they do uh, have the ability to increase that equity exposure. So maybe investors should see it as a smarter or a lower risk way of uh, taking equity exposure in their portfolio. And how about passive, um, you know, asset allocation funds? Do you, do you think that they're they're going to come soon as well? Absolutely, I think that uh, that may work really well because uh, you know uh, incorporating them in the portfolio is relatively straightforward because you know the equity allocation. Uh, so if you look at a equity hybrid category, that's typically tends to be about 70%. Uh, if you look at the uh, equity savings category, that tends to be typically about 40, 45%. So you know uh, what the number is going to be. And therefore it becomes relatively easy that at a, at a portfolio level as an investor, if I'm targeting, let's say 50, 50, then if I put so much money in, uh, in this kind of a product, then accordingly I'm getting so much of my allocation. So, so it can be done in a very simple way. So yes, definitely uh, that's how I would approach the passive side. Cool. Thanks, Ashwin. That's that's very, very informative. Uh, asset allocation funds, of course, are here to say there are definite advantages. I just want to reiterate one that Ashwin mentioned is it's a very tax efficient way of rebalancing your portfolio without paying any taxes. Um, thanks again, Ashwin. Really nice having you here. Thank you. Thank you.